Now that we have our app set up, we are gonna dive into our database. We're gonna create a table which will represent each image. And then from that, what we can do is extract a random row from our database table. We'll map that to an image that we have in storage, and then we'll go ahead and eventually return the actual image. For now, what we're gonna be doing is just looking at how we grab this from the database. Now, the first thing that we need to do is install Doctrine Debound. So let's go over and pull this in using Composer. This will just provide uh, an object relational mapper that we can use within Silex. So let's require in Doctrine Debound and we will set this up when it's finished. Okay, so now that that's done, we need to configure this and we can do this within Bootstrap app because we need to attach this to our application. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and register this on our application. And in here, we go ahead and pull in the provider for this. So it's under Silex, under provider, and it's our Doctrine service provider. Very, very simple. And then inside of this, what we want to do is go ahead and pass in some configuration. So in this case, what we do is we say DB options. We can register multiple database connections in here, but of course, at the moment, we only need one. And we just basically provide everything in here that we need. So we need a driver and I'm just going to be using MySQL, but you can pretty much use anything you want. So we're going to go ahead and define that in. We also need our host, which is pretty simple. Again, we're just working locally. So we have localhost and we have a database name, which in my case, I have called placecat. So again, create a database if you haven't already. We have a user, so pretty standard stuff, which again is root for me. We have a password, again, this is root. And then we have our character encoding as well. So in this case, it's UTF-8 and it's MB4, like so. So let's fix that up and we're done. So that is our database configuration set up. Now over in our root, we need to kind of create this out a little bit so we can actually pass in a width and a height. So we'll set that up now. We don't really need it at the moment because regardless of the width and the height of the image that we're requesting, uh, we always pull out an image at some point. We're gonna cache it later, but we always need an image. So I'm gonna go ahead and update the URI just for now. And I'm gonna simply provide two placeholders in here. So what we can now do rather than access home, which now of course doesn't exist, we go ahead and say something like 200 by 200 or literally any size at all. This will work for any size at all. So now that we've got that in there, the other thing I want to do is kind of make sure that a width and a height is always um, some kind of number and also always a positive number, which is really important. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the assert method here to say that we want the width and we're gonna use a regular expression here. So we're just gonna very simply say zero to nine and we're gonna use plus to make sure that this is unsigned. So it has to be a positive number. Of course, we can't have an image with a width and a height that's uh, negative. So we go ahead and use assert again, and we do the same thing for height. Very, very simple. We just pass in zero to nine, and again, we make sure this is unsigned, so it has to be positive. So give that a refresh. It works in exactly the same way, but now if we provide some silly value in here that's not a number, it just doesn't recognize the root. Okay, so now that we've done this, uh, we already pulled in app just here from the last part. So we can actually use this to go ahead and grab that from the database because we've now registered this on our app. So this is really, really simple. All we're gonna do is create a variable called image and we're gonna be kind of switching this around in a minute because, or a bit later, because we've got a couple of other things that we want to do here. But really simply for now, what we can do is just access app DB. We can go ahead and fetch an associative array back from a query that we give. Now, this is really simple. We just need to select something like a file name. So I'll go ahead and write this out before we put this into the database, just so we kind of know what we're doing. And this is maybe gonna be from an images table, and that is pretty much it. So that's all we need to do for now. What we could also do at this point is order this by random. So that kind of helps, and we're gonna limit this by one. So that will just give us a random record from this table. Okay, so now that we've kind of figured out how to do this, let's just do a var dump on image here. Go ahead and kill the page and we'll set our database up and get our images into a location that we can pull them out from. So the images table, as we know, we're extracting from this and we know that we have a file name just in here. This is gonna be a var char, maybe 255, it can be anything. And really what we want to do now is just kind of map this to files that we have on our file system. 
So over in public, I'm gonna create a folder in here, maybe called image, and I'm gonna go ahead and copy over a load of images to here. So if we come over to public, I'm just gonna pull over a load of cat images. I'll leave a link to all of these in the course download so you could go ahead and grab these. Let's make sure they're in the image directory and we now have one to 10 of images, perfect. So now that all we need to do is just go and say one.jpg and of course you could host these elsewhere. You can do really whatever you want here but uh, it's generally a lot easier to do this on the file system. So we can just go ahead and duplicate these down now and uh, make sure we have one to 10 in here so we're always plucking out one of these. So I'll just quickly go ahead and duplicate these down and I'll be back with you in just a second. Okay, so these have been duplicated down now. We now have 10 images in here, one JPEG through to 10 JPEG and we have them in the database as well. So now, now that we're picking out a random image, we should have uh, the ability to map that. So if we give this a refresh, we can see 5.jpg, give it another refresh, we see seven and so on and so forth. So this will just pick this out uh, in a random order. Okay, so now that we have done that, we pretty much have a random image that we can do something with. The next thing that we need to do is actually respond with our cropped image. So we need to reduce the width and the height. We need to actually return this in the response rather than home. So let's go ahead and just revert this back. Let's go ahead and stick null in there because we of course need to change that over. And we'll go over to the next part and look at how we use intervention image to manipulate this image and then respond with it.